Hey, what's up, SAS Masters? My name is George, and today I want to show you a deal called Zonka. This one lets you create surveys so you can analyze what your clients are thinking about you or your product. Now, the good part about Zonka is that the analytics are based for surveys, so the information that you're going to get is based on it. Now, I will be talking about the strong points and weak points about Zonka and the deals going on right now. So let's go jump over to check out that deal and see the good part about Zonka and the bad part about it. So let's go jump over to my desktop. All right, this is the deal that's going on right now, and it starts off at $69 for a lifetime deal. So that means if you pay once, you don't have to pay any more month to month. Now, if you guys would like to support me, that link will be in the description. It helps me out with a small commission. Now, let's talk about the plan that you actually get for those $69, and that will be license tier one. Let me jump down here. And all these plans are tied to the professional plan that you're gonna see. Even if you stack or you go to license tier three or five, it's professional plan. Um, what do you get in tier one? You get 25,000 website visitors per month. So that's if you embed it, 10,000 emails per month, 250 monthly SMS credits. The SMS only work for United States. I tried it with other countries. I tried Mexico and I tried United Kingdom and it did not work. So, but it is working for United States. You get 10 custom alerts, two users and six pre-built reports. Now, if you need a higher license tier because you need more limits, then tier three would be the way to go. Plus, you get CNAME, which is custom domain. That means when you share a link, it's gonna have your own domain. So it's not gonna send out through Zonka's domain. It makes you look more professional. And you get access to the premium integrations that are coming soon. Now, let me show you what the professional plan is over here in the pricing. Now, everything's gonna be tied to the professional plan. So in the future, if they add something or deduct something, it's tied to the professional plan, just so you understand. And let me show you what those premium integrations are. They're over on the next plan. It's HubSpot, Intercom, and Salesforce. Now, these could be important for you or not. So it just depends if you want to jump into that license tier three in case you need those features. Now, if you jump to license tier five, you get also locations, all right? So that also might be interesting for you because you might be doing surveys for a different, for a corporation that has different locations and that would be the way to go. But it, it does get kind of pricey, 429. But at the end of the day, if you don't need C name or premium integrations and you can go ahead and do fine with the limits that you have on license tier one, then you're good to go with one. In my case, I got license tier three. I'm good with that. I don't need locations, so I'm not going to invest on tier five, just so you get an idea. Okay, let's go jump into the dashboard for Zonka. Um, Zonka, one of my first thoughts about it and my personal thoughts about it is that they really thought it out when they built the UI. It's nice, it's friendly, and it's one of those UIs that you think, you know, it's not like some other deals that you see that are for surveys. It's like, it's super simple and super like lean. It's like, hmm, these guys didn't make, didn't thought it out too much. And these guys did take a lot of effort to do this. The analytics look really nice. Um, let's go ahead and talk about, I'm talking about the good stuff. Don't worry, I will, I will be getting to the bad stuff. Um, if you leave a review on AppSumo, I didn't want to do it right now because I wanted to show you this. They double your limits for the visit, visitor limits, all right? So that's cool if you do that. And this is the main dashboard. You can create a survey, add contacts, view responses, invite users, add tasks. They got like this little task thing. It's not meant for that, but you have it there. It's like you can add tasks. It's pretty simple, but they will be adding Kanban. It's in the roadmap, Kanban view. You see the surveys from the responses that's available right now, the MPS, assess, and the score for these, video surveys, test, add a survey, latest response, response trends. Now, let's go jump over to the good stuff. Let me open up this one that I've tested because I wanna show you the features that it has. Um, let's go into the builder first. That's where we're gonna start off. We're gonna say yes, let's wait for that to pop up. Okay, so this is the builder. Let me say yes right there. And one of the things, I dislike about it. The UI, super professional, I'm, I'm in love with it because I know they thought it out really well. But the look of the actual survey, I think it needs a little bit of work. It doesn't look as nice, for example, if we talk about Typeform, which is uh, one of those really nice looking ones, it doesn't look that good, okay? So if we go into the questions, let me show you this. Go to the next one. These are fine, they're gonna look good. We can change the background, we can change the colors. But in a sense, I wish it flowed a little bit nicer with a little bit of animation, if you like, something like that. But this is the way it looks. Let's actually open it up so you can, you can see it before we actually jump into the settings for this. Let's go into, let me open up a new link. Oh, here it is. Okay, let's grab it. Let's copy it. Let's open up a new tab. 
All right. Oh, like I said before, right now I'm, I'm not using the custom domain, even though I've added. Let me show you this one. That's actually not the one I've got, but this is how it actually looks. Right now, none of these are required, so I can go ahead and jump to the next step. And I could, for example, neutral. I click on it, it'll jump to the next one. What am I using? On the spot. All right, so this one, oh, because it's multiple choice. Multiple choice, go next. There is conditional logic if we want to jump into the next ones. So just so you get an idea of the surveys that you can grab right here. And see, actually, this is hard. You can do stars also, but you get the idea and we're done. Okay, let's go back into the survey, go into the editor. It's this one right here. Let's go back into the builder. This might extend a little bit, uh, the video, it's gonna be pretty long, but I want you to actually see the power of this. Okay, so there's different type of surveys that we can add, question surveys. Let's go into the ad first. You got all the general questions, which is section break, text box, drop down, button choice, the usuals, right? But then you got the ratings and scales, that are based for surveys, and you got rating, CSTAT, MPS, SES, and zero to 10 scale. I can just click on it and it'll add it to the survey and I can just move it around. And then we got the contact information um, questions. So you got full name, first name, last name, email, anniversary, birthday, country, et cetera, et cetera, right? Let's go back into the questions. These are the ones that I already added. And when I click on it, we get the settings on the right. So here are the settings, we can make it required. We can reverse it. So for example, if we wanna do from the other, you saw how that changed. Do we wanna use gradient or not, or just keep it simple? The choices, we can edit these choices right here. We can add for advanced settings right here. So for example, change the variable, hide the field if the data is passed, and we can change the survey theme here. Now for other type of questions, in this case, it's a different one. We can change it also. This is from not at all, not at all likely, to extremely likely. So these are different type of questions based on the answers that you want to receive. We got a general box right here, ranking, images if you want to capture, emails, star ratings, and all those. You get all of that. Now, um, Zonka does have conditional logic, so let me show you how that works. If I click on conditional logic button right there, it's gonna open it up. Now, I feel that it's good if you need the basic settings, but it could be more complex and better conditional logic. So for now, I think it's basic. So this is what's gonna happen. I click on that conditional logic. And if one of these is selected, for example, if I strongly disagree, let's just say if I disagree, is selected or not selected, okay, that's the do, if, then do this, skip to certain questions. So I can skip it all the way to the end, to the exit, or skip it to another question right here. Now I can also hide, for example, I can say hide um, question number five, if that's selected and also the email. And I can save that logic. Now what I'm saying that this could be more powerful is that for example, in conditional logic, it could also include other type of filters. So for example, if it contains, that's one of the popular ones that are in conditional logic. And you, with contains, it could be for example, if it contains, I don't know, um, Gmail then you give them a certain this uh, message or you send them to a certain message. Or if it can, if it doesn't contain the, I'm thinking, .com, then I don't know, something's missing. Or if it doesn't contain HTTPS for a website, then you're saying, hey, you know what, you can't advance. So those are more complex conditional logics that I guess they will be added in the future, I'm guessing, but for now, they're not added there. So that's how conditional logic works. For simple, for now. Next thing we got is the edit survey theme. So on the th survey theme, we can change the logos, the background colors, the welcome screen, the edit screen. I can add images, change colors, so on and so forth. Now, once you've built your survey and you're happy with it, you go into distribute and you have several ways of displaying this. One of the cool ones is the app kiosk. I'll go into that. For now, you get getting started, for example, offline surveys, which would be kiosk with the uh, app. You can install it on an iPad or on your phone, install the app, and you can display the surveys offline. And then you can go online, it'll drop in the information. Email surveys, SMS surveys, you can send them out through SMS, SMS web, which would be embedded. And embed, you got link, pop-up, side tap, button, and the usual embed. App kiosk is available for, for iOS and Android. Email, SMS, and send out through Slack if you like. Next thing we got are the alerts. What do you want to activate? So for example, in this case, I've added this alert 
and you can add filters to it, which is pretty interesting. So for example, I've set this filter right here. So I'm going to send a specific alert if someone responds to a certain question and it's, for example, if they strongly disagree, if they disagree or they somewhat disagree, then that alerts me. I want to know what's going on and I want to be the first one to onboard this client and see what happens. So this helps me out to get that alert. It's going to send it to me. My, I'm the staff on this one. It's going to be an email or Slack and the subject. I can set my own and the content. So you can see how the filters actually work. Like I said right here, it could be on days, users, tags, based on the questions, the star ratings. So for example, if you get one star, then you got to be alerted. I mean, you got to know that something is wrong and you want to go onboard this client. So that's really good that we have this. It's effective. The respond alerts, send email response to every responded of this survey. You can activate that. Enable condition response based on feedback metrics. So these ones are based on metrics. So depending on the score for MPS, CSATs, or SES, we can send out a different response there. Next thing we got are the variables. Obviously, the variables are tied to the fields that you add on the form. These can be modified in the over here. Let me show you in the advanced section right there. Select one of these advanced settings and I can change the variable to something that's more simple for me. For now, it's like Q under that underscore like three one one. Like what the hell is that? Right. So you can say, you know what? This is this is a question for no something more simple. It's like support question, right? So that helps me out understand what it's for. So you can change those variables here. Next, we got the integrations. Now, this is pretty cool. They, they got direct integrations with these. Some of these integrations only receive and some of them also send. OK, what am I talking about that? For example, Slack, I can send a survey and respond notifications. MailChimp, automate adding context to MailChimp. So that's only sending the information every time someone adds something, um, fills out a survey automated adding. But for example, on Sendesk, if so, if I add someone to Sendesk, I can send out a survey. All right. In Shopify, automatically send a survey to a customer after order on Shopify. So it also receives on on Zonka. All right. On Zapier, you can make it send out to whatever you want or receive. Now I have Zapier opened right here just to show you. I can send an email or I can send a survey so I can do those type of, of actions. How is this possible? For example, if I trigger something on Google Sheet, if I add a brand new email on my Google Sheet, it's going to send that information with that one. I can send an email or SMS or if it's I mean, Zapier is really extends and you can do a lot of automation with it and use it to send on Zonka. All right. And you got these other ones available. Next thing we have is the analytics. This is one I really like because it's really powerful. You got the net promoter score. Something is overlapping here. Net promoter score, which is something, for example, um, this gives you the analysis if someone would recommend your product or your service. That's what it stands for. And this is the score I've got with my test surveys. And it's really simple how you can see them. Customer effort score, customer satisfaction score, last 10 responses. You get a score for these. You get who's the email, the responses, response by channel. You get the insights. Really good stuff. Trust me. Responses, C stats, MPS, and SES. Really good anal analytics. They look nice. You go through them with calm, all right? The inbox to see the responses for each one of these. In the inbox, you can see a lot of information, like the IP and all of that. I won't be opening it up because I don't want to hide all of that right now. Um, trends, open up there. Net promoter trends. So, what's going on? You see the analytics in the trend form. Text. This is like um, the cloud tags, something like that. And I'm just randomly typing stuff. But this is pretty cool. Word count table. And you get the score for them also. So I just do some stuff here. Zonka, for example. And you you see how many times it's, it's been mentioned. So if someone mentions, um, you know what, support sucks. Or, you know what, sucks will be like three. It, it appeared three times, four times. Then you would have to check those here because that's going to alert you to know something. Um, tax, I don't have available because it's not the I'm not in tier five on license. But if you grab that, you will get that. Next thing we have is the responses. Again, you can view the inbox for the general ones. Contacts will be added here with response. No response on subscribers counts. Um, contact list, contact attributes. Um, like I said, this is really well thought out. You got tasks. 
for now it's not really powerful um, there's not much you can do it's like add task task name call email meetings so on and so forth description the date reminder and assign to um, in the roadmap they will have the Kanban view later on that's added you can view completed and overdue plus button is just the same as the ones we're viewing right here and let's go into the options because those are really interesting we can set our company name our logo the country user settings um, you can white label this, so that means you can add your own domain. I'm waiting for them to approve mine, which is survey.bbmedia.com. That's what I will be using, and I can remove the Sanka branding. I'm in tier 5, but I think you, you can do that on tier 1 also. Don't worry about that. And you can also set your own email. So sender email, you can add that. Sender name, sender email. You can add your own details right here. Oh, let me go back. Sender authentication, so they authenticate you are actual you are the actual owner of that email so you can send it out email survey logs when you have those the sma service developer you got api access so that's pretty cool if you want to have something developed like custom made so you can work with this pretty cool to have that webhooks um webhooks for now um, i asked already and i haven't got a clear response on it but for now the webhooks are only outbound what does that mean like i said before when someone fills out a, a survey it's going to send the information, all the information with that webhook, but it doesn't have inbound webhooks. Web hooks. So, for example, like I mentioned before, if I added a webhook that's sent from a CRM and I wanted to activate it so it sends out a survey to that customer, that's not available with webhook. webhook. <laughs> You'd have to use Zapier for that, and Zapier is, is not free. you got to pay for it. So, well, you could get away with Zapier with the free if you don't use a premium um, application. But if not, you have to pay for it. And there's some limitations there. But basically, that's it. Let's go into the roadmap. Some interesting things. Things that are released recently. What's happening next in development that I think it's important. It's, let me go right here. It's in the future pipeline. Let me go to the top. This one's important for me. Adding videos to all survey questions. Adding a video is really cool because you can actually record a video of the actual question in form of a video instead of having it written. You get SendFox, that's gonna be integrated. Kanban, improved display. There's some other ones that are interesting. They're gonna add Thai language, if that's something that you need. And what else? There's several things. I will leave the link for this roadmap in the description. And feature requests, they will be added integration with Pally, Integrately, and Integromat, which are three really popular ones to use. And sub accounts, which I don't know, they will be adding that in, in a licensed tier. They don't mention that any sub accounts here. So need to be aware of what's going to happen there. But basically, that is the deal that's going on. At the end of the day, I will be keeping this deal because I love the analytics. I love that it looks professional and well thought out. The only thing I dislike about it is the way, like I said before, how the actual survey flows when you click on another one. I like that type form type of look. And that's the thing that um, I wish they implemented. And they might be thinking about it if we all requested. So let's check that out. Well. That is a deal for Sanka. If you guys would like to support me, that link will be in the description. If you guys would like to buy from that link. But there you go. Thank you all for watching. My name is George. This is Ask Master, and I'll see you guys later.